So let's rank all the films I watched for the first time for the month of December 2023. Big things! Entertainment rankings and reviews. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers. Welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Noel, better known to as the Big D, back again with another ranking. This time it's going to be my December 1st time watches ranking. Yes, I watched 20 films last month. Some of them were kind of missed and what have you. A few were kind of Christmas themed, so yeah. I'll show you a picture and then get back to you on to it. And I'm going to try and go real quick quick and what have you. So this way I don't take a long time and what have you. Because this is kind of going to be a big one. So I'm going to try and go as quick as I can on my thoughts on this after showing you the car. The, well, the picture for the movie I'm going to talk about. Okay? Now if you're ready, then let's start this ranking. Sit back, relax, and here we go. Coming in at number 20 is... Bad Santa 2 from 2016. Well, this film did have a few zany, funny moments and what have you. Billy Bob Thornton's still a little nuts and what have you. But I didn't think this was as good as its predecessor, but you don't have to take my word for it. I mean, with the addition of Kathy Bates, it, it made it more, a little bit fair and what have you. It had Tony Cox back and the kid who played the... Uh, guy's name and what have you. Hang on a second, please say my Sorry about that. Sorry about that. It was Brett Kelly. Yeah, we have him back as well. Anyway, who plays the kid now, grown up. Uh, yeah, it's funny in some ways, but it's not quite as good as the first one. This film bombed at the box office and what have you. Maybe I'll review that for this up. Uh, well, for this year's holiday season. Just stay tuned. We're away from that. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Bad Santa 2, it's alright. Not great, though. And coming in at number 19 is... Blood Beat from 1983. This film was kind of, uh, I don't know, after seeing someone put up a rank or a list of Christmas horror flicks, and why have you? I decided to check it out. I found it on Tubi. I do believe it's on YouTube as well. Anyway, this film's kind of strange. It's um, about a um, young couple attending a family gathering for Christmas in a rural home with a spirit wearing samurai armor begins killing the members of the family, and which two of them have psychic abilities. Well, this film's alright, and why have you? Strange, though, but, well... I may give you a rewatch maybe later on this year and and review it. We'll see. That's all I can tell you. Now coming in at number 18 is The Exorcist Believer, which of course came out last October. Well, I went into this thing and what wasn't sure it would be any good or why have you, but it's, I think it's all right and why have you. I wouldn't think this is as close to as good as the original, which recently celebrated its 50th anniversary, by the way. But of course, I've already reviewed that. I didn't feel like I needed to re review it again. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to say this, it does serve as a fair continuation to the classic itself, though. I will say that... It was, since it was directed by David Gordon Green, who helmed Halloween 2018 and its sequels, it did it all. It was all. It was fine. Why have you? It was pretty eerie in some parts, though. Check out my spoiler-free review of this if you haven't. But it was. It was fine. Why have you? I wish him the best of luck with the sequel. And coming in at number 17 is. Dr. Seuss is the Grinch musical from two from 2020. Now, this one was, well, it was all right in my view. It aired on NBC and what have you. And it starred Matthew Morrison. You may remember him from TV's Glee as a titular character. With um, Dennis O'Hare playing a grown version of Max in Boo Boo Stewart. You may know him from 
X-Men Days of Future Past and the Descendants trilogy as, well, the regular version of Max. Well, I'm gonna say, it was, it was pretty fun and what have you. Not quite really the best take of the Grinch and what have you, but, oh, uh, it was fine and what have you. So, I may review this sometime, maybe in the, during this coming holiday season. But anyway, it was okay. And coming in at number 16 is... To All a Good Night from 1980. This is another holiday slasher I, my friend was talking about. I do believe that, that... I believe it was the horror man who mentioned this and the blood beat. I'm almost sure that was him. Anyway, I watched it after watching this. I had to look up, and I found the full movie on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, you can check it out. And it was pretty good, and what have you. I'm not sure if I consider it to be great, but but good, though. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I thought this was just good, and what have you. I mean, it has Jennifer Ryan in it, who I'm familiar with, seeing her in Movies like Up the Creek and A Very Brave Christmas. Yeah. So anyway, I thought she was good. I thought, yeah. A pretty good early slasher and what have you. Definitely. Now coming in at number 15 is... National Lampoon's Van Wilder, The Rise of Taj from 2006. Now, this, of course, is the sequel to the 2002 film. After re-watching its predecessor, I thought, what the hey, I thought I'd check this one out for the first time. I will say it has its crazy, raunchy, and what-have-you moments its predecessor had. Cal Penn was still good, though, as Taj. And the rest of the cast, they weren't too bad, and what-have-you, but it was still kind of nuts and what-have-you, like what you got with the first film. I will talk about that in its predecessor down the road. I haven't seen the third one, though. But it's still pretty funny, though. Definitely. And coming in at number 14 is... Eight Big Christmas from 2021. Now, at first I thought this would involve some various characters from video games in it. I knew it had Neil Patrick Harris in it, but... Well, I just didn't realize that this was about someone who was trying to do his best to get himself an actual NES for Christmas and what have you. But still, I thought it was fun and what have you. It was just, wow, crazy and what have you. But I found it to be a little fun since I watched it on Max. So, yeah, it was it was pretty decent in my view. Maybe I'll review that next holiday season. You never can tell. And coming in at number 13 is... Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire. Now, this is a new Netflix film. It's a space opera from Zack Snyder. And, well, I'm going to say it was... It was fine and decent, YV. It's just that its pacing could have used a little better. But again, I don't know why the hell everyone's coming out hard on this like a blooming battle axe or a guillotine or something like that. Oh, they just don't have no respect for Snyder, I bet. Oh, but who am I kidding? Let's not jump to um, any controversies or anything like that. This film tried its best. I hope for the best when we get the director's cut. It'll look a little better. And I wish them the best of luck with the sequel when it comes out this spring. Yeah. It was still fine for what I had to offer. Check out my review of it if you haven't. Now, coming at number 12, here's another Netflix film. And that would be... Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget. Now, I was kind of a little mixed on this, but it's still fine, YV. It comes close to be, it sort of in a way actually comes close to being as good as its predecessor. I mean, despite it has a different voice acting cast for some of the characters, not all of them, some of the cast from the original film do return. And I'm just going to say, it's just wow. Check this film out on Netflix and check my review of it out. It's a fine little sequel and what have you. I mean, we waited so long for it, so 
It was Ryan Wyatt, but fun in some parts. And coming in at number 11 is... Migration. This is Illumination's newest film. And I will say, I was mixed on this as well. But it still has a pretty good voice acting cast in my view. It was a real quacked up film, but still funny though. I wouldn't consider this to be one of the best from the studio, but it has its moments. But anyway... Just so much fun, YV. I think your kids would enjoy that. Check out my review of this if you haven't seen it yet. I, I can see a lot of you have already watched it. It's gone over 50 views on my channel already, so good. Migration, it's pretty fun, what have you. But I hope for the best we'll see if Illumination will release Despicable Me 4, which I forgot to mention in my review. There's a, a new short with that with Migration called Moon, which kind of picks up after the events of Despicable Me, as a matter of fact, the first film. Yeah. Now for the top 10. Coming at number 10 is... Johnny Be Good from 1988. This film unfortunately bombed at the box office, but it still has a few fun moments and what have you. I mean, with Anthony Michael Hall and... Robert Downey Jr. long before Iron Man, and Uma Thurman in her first film and what have you. I will say those are pretty good appearances. This film's kind of a little crazy, but I thought it had a few fun moments and what have you. And of course, we hear the great song this is named after by Chuck Berry and then a Jewish priest actually did a cover of this. And theirs wasn't too bad, but I like the Chuck Berry version a little more, thank you. Heck, I'd even listen to the cover by the season three cast two of the original Zooms version, even. <laughs> I know, I just ran there for fun. But Johnny Be Good, I thought it was I thought it was a fine movie and what have you. Maybe I'll review that sometime down the road and possibly defend it, but I don't know just yet. Stay tuned. And coming in at number nine is Candy Cane Lane. This is a new crime film with A. Murphy. I mean, it's been a long time since I last heard something from him. But he manages to make a big splash with this film and what have you. Um, I like Tracy Ellis Ross's appearance and what have you. So, anyway, this film was pretty funny and what have you. Kind of a little strange, but funny though. I mean, if you missed out on seeing it this Christmas, then wait for... The next season, <laughs> or if you just want to try and go go watch some Holly flicks just because it's so lame, why have you? Then go for it. Check out my review of this if you haven't seen it yet. This film just proved to be so wow, especially with releasing all the strange, all the things from the Christmas tree that Murphy's character got that big one, which of course were in the forms of in the forms of the things that were. Brian for the 12 Days of Christmas, you know. <laughs> All right, enough said. Coming in, number eight is... Bo is Afraid. This is a recent film from A24. It has Joaquin Phoenix in it. and was directed by Ari Aster, the guy who gave us Hereditary and Midsommar. It's not quite... This isn't quite close to as good as those, these two, but... I'd say Joaquin Phoenix did an exceptionally good job. I don't want to talk too much about this. I plan to do a review of this. It will be spoiler-free coming up later in the month. This is kind of a strange film, though. But I'll talk more about it when I review it, okay? So I don't want to get into too much details. Next, coming in, number seven is... Gran Turismo. Now, I thought this film was really good and what have you. I will say it has a really good cast and what have you. And it proved to have a lot of good feeling to it since I've never played the video games and what have you. Uh, since it's based off of both this and a true story about the teenage Gran Turismo player who becomes a professional racing car driver, Jan Martinborough. Guy who plays him... Uh, Archie Mattaquai did a pretty good job. And I like David Harbour and Orlando Bloom as well. 
They were all pretty good. Check out my review of this if you haven't seen it yet. It's a pretty good film. And it was pretty awesome. And coming in at number six is... Paw Patrol, the Mighty Movie. And this was my last re... Well, for, I mean, first time watch. I almost said rewatch. Whoops. After rewatching the first film, I thought I'd check this one out. I mean, as I've said already, I'm really not that much of a Paw Patrol person, but since these films have gotten some decent response, I thought I'd check them out. I rewatched the first film, and then just recently I watched this one for the first time. I thought this was even more fun than the first one, but you want to take my word for it. I thought it was pretty cute and what have you. I'll talk more about this when I do a review of it later in the month and what have you. I've got to say, the Paw Patrol becoming superheroes, that's real something. And coming in at number five is... One Thousand One Arabian Nights from 1959. Now this is an animated take on the tale of Aladdin featuring the the master of myopic mayhem, the nearsighted Mr. Magoo himself. I gotta say, um, Jim Back is still does a great job on it, just like he did in the cartoons and what have you. And I thought the characters were absolutely very, very good in my view. I definitely should review this film sometime this year. And you know what? I think I will. But anyway, the rest of the characters were pretty good, too. This was just like seeing an actual Mr. Magoo cartoon. I think I might have seen a bit or two of this, but I haven't seen it. But I never saw this film in its entirety until now. So, 1001 Arabian Nights, it's a pretty good film. I thought it was a... A nice little take on Aladdin, long before Disney even gave us their Aladdin film. <laughs> and coming in at number four is... Yellow Rose from 2019. Now, I've been a little curious about this film. And, well, since I decided to lay off the streaming for just a bit, it was on um, the MoviePlex channel, I thought, that since I had nothing else to watch, I thought I'd check it out. See if it was any good and what have you. And you know what, folks? It was definitely. Uh, I don't know what to tell you about this, but <laughs> let me just get get the back in order. Oh uh, yes. Anyway, it's about a Filipina um, undocumented immigrant who dreams of leaving her small town in Texas to pursue her country music dreams. I just couldn't believe this. This was really, really something in my view. I never would have thought to see um, someone of a different race actually do country music. I mean, well, now I've seen African American country singers. You sh I think y'all should probably already know there was, there's been some like that. But uh, let's not try and get on to. I'm not trying to cause controversy or anything, but this was just a big surprise in my Anyway, I thought the film was very good in a you. I definitely need to review that film one day. We'll see what happens. Now, the top three comprises of the recent Warner Bros. films, so this was a tough decision to make. So, let's get on with Coming in at number three is... Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Now, again, this has turned to be another humiliating failure for superhero flicks. But I can understand that we're going with just a mere two films this year and not a whole lot. But I can't accept the fact, in my view. Well, they're saying two, but there may be just more. But well, I can't guarantee that. So anyway, um, I ain't like this just about as much as the first film. You can check out my spoiler-free review of it if you haven't seen it yet. Jason Momoa is still pretty good. I like Patrick Wilson, what have you. Now, one thing I failed to, to point, well, to mention in my spoiler-free review of this was it was nice we get to see Aquaman's seahorse sea known as Storm in this, which I thought that was a pretty good addition. Just sorry I failed to mention that, but I'll mention it right now. <laughs> but anyway, Aquaman the Lost Kingdom, it's pretty good in my view. I don't care what anybody says. The heck with what they say. It's it's a good sequel and a decent way to end the DC. Now, now, coming in at number two, again, 
a tough decision because we had two good musicals, Warner Plow. Well, kind of in a musical way. So coming in, number two is... The Color Purple. Now this is a bold new take on the beloved classic. I thought it was amazing and why have you. As much as I like the original film with Whoopi Goldberg and all and Danny Glover and Oprah Winfrey and the others, this film just took the cake. Of course it's based on the mu the Broadway musical of the same name. I'm gonna say this is probably the most incredible musical flick I've seen on the big screen sometime and why have you. I love the performances we got from everyone. Taraji P. Henson, Daniel Brooks, Coleman Domingo, Corey Hawkins, her, Halle Bailey, and of course Fantasia Barino. I'm just going to say this was just so amazing and incredible. If you like the original, then you may feel right out with this one. Check out my spoiler free review of this if you haven't. It's doing pretty well. I'm just lucky it hasn't gotten out of the views, thank goodness. But anyway, I thought it was just so incredible. You got to check it out. But if that's number two, then that means my number one first time watch of December 2023 is... Wonka! Yes. I thought I'd go with this one over Aquaman. And even the color purple. I was thinking of doing Aquaman, but I thought, no. Nah, I don't want it to cause a controversy or anything. I picked maybe a film that's that much better in one of you. Wonka's been doing much better in what have you. Um, Paul King did an exceptional good job with the Regent. I love Timothy Chalamet's performance as Wonka himself. This was just a great prequel in my view. It was so amazing and just about everything. Check out my spoiler free review of this if you haven't. I see a lot of you have already seen it. It's gone like over 40 views. I think probably going on 50, but I could be wrong though. I think I'm about. You at the 45 on that. But anyway, Wonka is a real sweet treat. I think this was so amazing, incredible, and all that jazz. So, Wonka, it's great. And that's what makes it my number one first time watch of December 2023. So, what did you think of this ranking? What's your top? What was your top first watch of December 2023? You can give me your top pick, your top three, or top five tops. Leave them for me in the comment section below. If you like the video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And we'll have another ranking coming up soon. And it will be my favorite films from the second half of 2023. So we'll see where Wonka winds up on there. So for now, I hope you enjoy this. And check out my reviews of my spoiler free reviews of the top three films on this ranking. The upper left hand corner is my spoiler free review of Wonka. The upper right hand corner is the review of the 2023 version of The Color Purple. And the bottom left hand corner is the review of Aquaman and The Lost Kingdom. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.